been married for 36 years, worked hard our whole life, haven't we? So sure have. It just all of a sudden hits you that before you know it, we'll, we'll be retiring. So we went to see a financial planner at Sun Super. They gave us some great advice. Good to know we are on track. So all we have to do now is plan our holiday. Go around Australia. Travel around. My biggest dream is to buy myself a Harley. And you deserve it. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to retire and have fun. things there is the word trade-off. Every decision you make has a trade-off. If, if, if you come to the day, you can't be having lunch or going to the beach or something. If you put money in super, you lose, that, you lose access to your preservation age. If you leave money in the bank, it won't fall when the market falls, but you won't get any capital gain on it. So the first essential element is to always understand the trade-off. There is no investment decision you can make that doesn't have a, have a downside to it. Understand that? So there's always a trade-off. If, if you don't know the trade-off, then you don't know enough about it. And I think this, this to me is one of the great quotes. It's not the, the strongest who survives, nor the most intelligent, the one that's most adaptable to change. Because you're going to see change coming faster and faster and faster, as you'll see later. But to me, the the, the the elephant in the room, which is the greatest moral challenge of our times, is growing life expectancy. A woman 50 can now expect to live to 90. Okay. But that takes no account of the medical advances that will happen in 40 years. No account. If you look at the, in the Sunday modern day, they talk about stem cells. They're saying, well, stem cells are a bit funny, but you know. Stem cells in 40 years' time will be, will be nothing like today's stem cells. And a guy, well, a guy, strong chance of 90 and, and uh, odds on living to 85. The big challenge people now face is living longer, longer than their money. And the problem is, if you've got no money, that's what you're going to get. And couples live pretty well, in my experience, on 30 grand a year, but a, a single person who has to pay rent cannot cope. $400. So what, what you're seeing is the, the country is, is dividing into haves and have nots. There's those who care and those who don't. But I guess that's a demographic map. See that age 60, 50, 40? See that? And this is females and this is males. So at 95, see us, us males have all died off, but, the, but, the, but there's still some females there. Uh, I don't think it's genetic. I think it's the fact that guys, well, a, a they take more risks when they're when they're young. They used to smoke a lot. You know, I think I think as we get as we get older, I think the gap's going to narrow. But it is narrowing. Now, this in 1946, we started to breed these people called baby boomers. And we bred baby boomers till 1964 when the pill came in. So what you've now got is this band of people aging. Can you see that? And just like a carpet snake's eating the rat and the rat's inching through its body, this bulge is moving up, isn't it? And that's not a, a wild forecast, that is fact. So just for fun, before we start, I want to take you back to 1946. And that, and that, that was what the woman's week was in 1946. And that's only, uh, that's only, you know, well, about 60 years ago. Then you say, we, we, we look like that, when, when you know, Robert Reagan sent Chesterfields out, we had camel, camel cigarettes, and if you can find a camel image, there are six naked females on the camel's body, and that's fact. <laughs> it is, there's six naked females, and the subliminal message was if you smoke camels, you'll get a lot of girls. Then you had those sort of things, that was good fun. <laughs> Yeah, these good things, you know, if, you, if, you, if you get the kids on the coca colour early, they, they will, they will, they will, they'll be better socialised. And then we have, you know, things like that. So there we are. Now, that's not 
Now let's fast forward to 1964, and that's what the woman's wig did look like. Uh, and, and that is that is that's only 49 years ago. And you know we sort of look look better and drank sparkling star wine and sparkling Ryan Pearl and all that sort of stuff and Barossa Pearl. That's I like that one. That was interesting. And and these have got a lot milder, you know. I made this presentation once for my son, with one of my sons were there, and I said, and the fags, the fags were different. He said, Dad, you can't mention fags. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and, and of course, we, now we get to get to 2013, I mean, it's quite different. And I think that's a classic oh, ad, isn't it? A classic oh, ad. Gosh. And that's fabulous, you know, that's just nice. <laughs> And that's creative. This is good stuff, so you can see. <laughs> You can see in a short time, a relatively short time, how things have changed. But this is the demographic map updated. This is straight off, off the ABS website. The brown, the dark brown is, is today and the blue is 20 years ago. You can, you can see it happening, can't you? Which means in business, if you're in business, a lot of people that will need servicing, you know, what sort of needs will these people have? Uh, Growing, growing demands on welfare. The trouble is we have an attitude that government should pay for everything. If you had to buy the age pension today, if you were a couple today, age 65, and I told you the age pension is 31,000 index for life, and there was no age pension, how much would you have to hand over to buy that? Have a guess. We'll try $600,000. That's what you would need to hand over to buy an income for life, a 30 grand index for life. And people say, oh, I'm only getting me taxes back. Well, sorry, they're not, you know. Okay, now, now this is called from, uh, from Pyramid to Coffin. That was back in 1925. Not too many people over, over 50. That's now, and this is what's coming. So it means enormous pressure on governments all around the world. I've just been reading the international monetary fund re re report on this, they say it'll be 15 times worse than the GFC. In Holland already, government pensions have been cut. This is going to be massive. And the, and the big message is that if you don't invest yourself, you may find that life will be very, very tight. Now on the tables, these are the life expectancy tables. If you're a male 50, or well, it says 32 years, a female of 36, but you know, they take no account of what's going to happen, no account at all. And a, and a, and a guy 80 has got nine, and a female 80 has got 10, and once you get to 90, it's always two. Okay? Now, now, this, this is May this year. This is a fascinating article. It particularly talks about a group of people who are small people, and they have a genetic problem, they can't grow. So they're about this high and can't grow. But what gives them that also means they cannot get cancer or diabetes. So they're now working hard to isolate the gene that, that stops them growing. And then when they get that, which they will, then they've, then they've abolished cancer and diabetes. So, so these things are coming. And that's just a picture of me in, a, in 30 years time, <laughs> 107, he's, a, he, he, uh, he's 107 and still trading. So there you are, so that's what's happening. Now let's go to the real world. Last year in Brisbane, the Brisbane City Council had a payroll hitch and the bus drivers got paid four hours late. They get paid 52 grand a year. You get paid $1,000 a week. You paid four hours late and there was total chaos. All sorts of family crises, no money. This is the average person. So that's what we face. The, the average person is ageing like everybody else. It's a worry, isn't it? Isn't it? So th this is the division. The average superannuation balance is about $175,000 for blokes. Many people retire with a house mortgage still. So people are, are underfunded and un under, uh, underprepared. Now I've got a mate, David Williams. I want you to write down his website details, my longevity, and you can work out for free how long you're going to live. Because David, David figures that it, it, it doesn't, see, 
All life expectancy table says if you're 50, you live to 82. That's all it says, right? But David said it depends on S is your situation. Wealthy people live longer, in general. H is health. Healthy people live longer. A is attitude. Happy people live longer. P is parents. Good parents live longer. E is eating habits. Good eating habits live longer. So if you're poor and unhealthy and a bad attitude and your parents all die junk and you eat junk, right? <laughs> You won't be the same as someone else, will you? So you can just go and do a very simple quiz and key in all your details. I get I get the 94 on the scale, which I think is pretty good. Okay. Now this is now let's pretend now that you're in cabinet. They you know, say tax the rich. Well, you know that if you earn less than hundred thousand dollars, your contribution to the tax take is negative. If you earn less than $100,000, your contribution to the tax take is negative when you get all your benefits back. Basically, we've got this tiny amount paying 26% of all income tax. It's, it's scary, isn't it? This little thing here, that's 61% of income taxes paid by this group. So we've got a very skewed tax base. And this is interesting. When the government complained, now I'm, I'm a political, but I'm also a realist, all right? When they came out at budget time and said, the dollar has got us and times are tough, their, their revenue is the blue one. It, it was going up, wasn't it? See the blue going up. It just they spent more than they earned. It wasn't like they had a collapse in income. Remember Julie is the man John and John with Julie and, and John suddenly went to his bank, he, he didn't get his bonus, remember that, that thing of Julius? So basically we didn't have a revenue shortfall, we had an expenditure problem. That's all it was. And things like that. They could still spend $2.2 million on the Crescent Head Surf Club in New South Wales, which I think is Windsor or Oakshot. You know, so mm. that's fact. Yeah. Now, these are the kind of things that Ross Gitton thinks the government could do to balance the budget. Because we've now got a $300 billion debt. That means $20 billion we don't have for NDIS and age pensions and health and roads and everything else. You could remove negative gearing, I don't think it's on, remove the senior Australian tax offset, take off the, the discount on capital gains tax, uh, hit, hit, hit super and change GST. Well, to me, the no-brainer is to raise the GST because the GST is what you need to bring everybody into it. It's the only one that works for everybody because as more people age, I mean, if, if you look at this, this is the, is, is the scary thing at all. Of the 65s and over, 87% pay no tax. Now, I know it's nice if you're in that group but someone's got to pay for the, pay for the government, haven't they? So that's the state of play. And that's interesting. You'll see that the Liberals are blue and Labor is red. Do you see a bit of a pattern there? <laughs> Labor borrows and Liberal pay it back, and then Labor borrows and Liberal pay it back again. Always has been, hasn't it? So there we are. Now, let's get back to what you can do. And the first thing is, is you must be able to count. So can you please count the, the legs on the, on the elephant for me? Come on. How many legs can you see? Anybody? Don't be shy. Four. Four. More than I should. Five. 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 Seven. Seven. That's good. Eight. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. To me, it's to show you a, a basic truth that the, the backbone, the eyes, tuskies, trunk, are the unchanging fundamentals to become wealthy and keep it. And as a friend of mine said recently, I mean, really, you should be okay if you don't do anything stupid, okay? And stupid is like going guarantor for your kid in the building business, means silly investments. I've spoke to a lady on the, on, on the phone today from Yapu and she was saying her brother's been conned, he put all his money into something they couldn't talk about, it was brothels. Well, that's all right. Yeah, but they didn't actually invest the money, they just stole it. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty silly. But, you know, uh, the, knowing the, the higher return, the higher the risk, yes. If someone rings you for an investment, you do what? Hang up, Hang up real fast. They're, they're the basics. But these legs 
Oh, that's markets and Centrelink rules and superannuation rules and tax rules, you know. So really it means you understand the basics. And I'll talk later about the 20 commandments, which are the basics, but you need guidance on, you know, on those legs. I mean, I, mean, I talk to my account once a month. I probably answer 40 questions a week in the papers. I need to get advice on that. I don't know them all. You know, you really need to get guidance on what's, on what's important. And I think one of the really important ones for all of us is compound interest, which simply means if you borrow or invest, the amount you have at the end of the period depends on the time of the investment and the rate. That's all. If the time's short, the rate don't matter. If you invested a grand a month at 6% for two years, you'd have $25,000. If you took, took a bit of a risk and doubled your rate of return, you have 12%, $27,000. Because the term is short, the rate doesn't matter. I mean, if you've if you got a term deposit rolling over and you're one bank's offering you 4.1, there really isn't much chance of racing around for six months for, for 4.2, is there really? You know, by the time you you get a bank check and pay pay fifty dollars for that, and take it over, wait five days to be cleared, it's not worth it. But now, but thirty years is a million or four million. That's a big difference, isn't it? And anyone in this audience who is under sixty-five, with that I'm sure you all are, you're going to go to ninety-five anyway. And the lesson in that is you've got to be thinking long term on your asset mix. You can't afford to be hiding in capital stable, hiding, hiding in balanced. You need a good mixture of assets with plenty of growth. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Because at the end of the day, all superannuation is, is a vehicle that holds assets. It's nothing else. If they aren't performing right, as you wish them, then, then you've got the wrong asset mix. Okay, so the menu is really all you've got basically is cash property or shares, isn't it? And they've always said, well, you need a mix of each. You need, you need to understand the way each of these works. Well, there, just one second. Uh, thinking back to last year, calendar year ending December, gone six months ago, what sort of year do you think it was? Anybody want to have a guess? Flat. Flat. Volatile, yes or no? Mm -hmm. yeah. Fragile. Fragile? See, that's what everyone says. In fact, it was one of the best three years in history. No. The, the, uh, the, the papers don't tell us, but really, every asset class did better than its long-term average. That's only happened three times since 1901. Including property? Well, properties, the problem with properties, you can't measure it. I mean, I've got no idea, well, I will talk about it in a minute, but I mean, I've got no idea how your house at Noosa did compare to a property in Karoi or something in Perth or Darwin or Nambour. See, this is, this is measurable stuff, that's all. This, this is measurable stuff, like Australian shares, global shares, corporate bonds, all the measurable stuff. Like listed, unlisted property, well, to me it's 8% up, but, but hard to measure. Listed was 31%. But, but it was a good year. And, and the previous year was a bad year. It was a terrible year. Yeah. Okay, now, so the, the, the cash rate is now 2.75 and going down, I think. One of the best investments I made, it was August 2011, two years ago. And a term deposit of 200,000 came up at the same day as the market crashed. And I said, right, do I want to reinvest at 5%? No, I bought 100 grand of Westpac at 18 bucks and 100 grand of Cromwell Bank at 44 bucks. I've had a massive capital gain on that, as you can imagine. But, but I, I hopped there when the market was down. You know, so, anyway, cash. So, to me, the purpose of cash is for very nervous people. If you're very, 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 very nervous, you keep your money in, in cash in case the market drops but you pay a massive price for that. And uh, or else, as I'm doing, it's waiting for a market drop to come and buy something else. Now I've got a, a term deposit rolling over in 
in a, in a, in a fortnight. I'm going to keep it short. Uh, with the, with your, hopefully there'll be a market for and I can buy something. Now, and there's, there's uh, interest rates, what's been, we think they're going to go down still. But, you know, forecasting rates is dodgy. But it's getting, it's getting harder for people to stay in cash. There's a thing called the doctrine of relative attractiveness. How attractive is this composed to that? If I've got 100,000 coming up on a term deposit, but I'd rather put it in Telstra and get six, or the bank and get four. And Telstra at six franked is much better than the bank, the bank at four. Okay, now, the share market. It's, it's been a funny six months. It's bounced up and came back. It's really, it's up, it's done 1% for the last six months. It's pretty crook. But for 12 months, it's done 98%. So if you had $100,000 in the old ordinary accumulation 12 months ago, it's now worth $190,000. So it's been good. And shares over 10 years, 8%, and, and 20 years, 9%. So I think with shares, we can look forward to a, a nice, you know, long-term 8 or 9%. Now, property. Who loves property here? Okay. Why? It's the only thing I can relate to. Only thing you can relate to? And, uh sort of uh, do your own groundwork and keep yeah. the basic rules. And your experience has been good with property? Yeah. Any bad ones? Because I've got good and bad ones. I wouldn't say I've got a massive portfolio, but if you stick with the basics and you take okay. an interest in it, I think okay. you generally can work out what, the, okay. you know, what way it's going to go. Okay. But, but here's a case. Well, I was up at Hamilton Island giving it a superannuation conference. 1.4 down to 7, 1.3 to 700, and they still can't sell it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and look at the look at the look at the views behind it. Beautiful. And that's interesting. That is, it's a bit complex, but that's the year down the side, and that's average weekly earnings, and that's average Brisbane. How you got Sydney and Perth? Average house prices and times earnings. As you can see, property is getting pretty dear, isn't it? What's really interesting, and I wrote my first book 25 years ago, and I said then, if a couple bought the average house, and they are on the average wage, and they used all of her wage to pay the mortgage off, in five years they're debt free, and they can start a family living on one wage. The current book says, if they did that for 10 years, the mortgage would be manageable. Mm -hmm. And the early assumption were rates were 15% back in 87. So that shows how much dearer property's got. Okay, now, now is that a good investment? No. Well, first question is what? Where is it, isn't it? How about the corner of Albatross and Hedges Avenue, Mermaid Beach? Every tick on location? Yes. Best street in Queensland, isn't it? Apart from Hastings Street and all those sort of streets. <laughs> this parade. We are in Unit 10 there, right? With the three bedroom on street, northeast corner, high enough for the burglars don't get you. You know? Uh, that's it. Is that pretty good? Yep. Yep. That's the view from the beach as it was. That's the view of the beaches now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I should have bought a birthday cake. It's having its 23rd birthday. I bought it in May 1990 for 500 grand. Now it's worth 850, coming down from 1.4 million. I've rung Andrew Henderson and said, I want to sell it. I said, I don't want to list it and start paying all these fees to you guys, but you just put it in your back pocket and you bring me 850 clear and I'll sign straight away. He hasn't rung me back, so that's a, that's a good sign that's not, that's not going cheap. Same money in shares would be worth $4.5 million. That's the $4 million mistake. That's the index. I'm not picking some special share. That's the index. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, if we flick back, see these properties here in Albatross Avenue, built around 1965, 66, roughly, I had one of a six pack. We were 125 albatross. I had one of a six pack, which I sold for $160,000 to buy this heap of rubbish. It's just sold for $6 million. 
That's six into one, one million each. It's on 48 perches. At the end of the day, the money is in the land. Do you agree? Yes. It's the land. Ask all these people down at uh, Hyatt, I mean, I mean uh, Palmer Coolum have done their bum. You know, go off mine. So there you are. Now, now let's talk about shares, you know, property spreaders. I don't know if it's relevant to you guys, but it may be relevant to your families and friends. It's Queensland's biggest industry. They're making 50,000 cold calls a week. And the cold call goes, how would you like to pay your, ha pay your house off faster and save tax? So you say, of course, right? Do you know the government's giving, in, giving incentives to invest in property? That's negative gearing. No. Well, to see if you qualify for the government to help you, are you free Wednesday or Thursday night to see if you qualify? That means you've got a job. Then it's a six hour interview by which time you've bought a house to be built. So they can load the building contract with $60,000 of hidden commission and away you go. And they're the, they're the sort of thing. So we're having a campaign against it. Um, you know, and, and, we, and, and we're making progress, but, but it's difficult. Because see, people don't know their big condo they try to sell. And then they've got to find people who stand up in court and testify to it. Anyway, we're working on it, but, but basically they've always got names like Park Trent and Members Alliance and JDL and RPM, all these names which are meaningless. The website never ever show the people about us, we're here to help you. doesn't mention who we are, right? Because if you did a Google on the people, they're all going to be in Google as, as con men. Uh, they always ring you. To me, if I was buying property, I would first of all work out my budget, then I'd go and find it. Well, I'd, I'd talk to Offermans and Dowling and Nowley and all the hookers and all the people around the place till I found a bargain, wouldn't you? But they ring you, and it's always about saving tax. And they control everything. And they always thought the new house. So please watch them. If you know anybody, let me know, okay, please. Anybody been approached? You've been approached? Um, well, I did do, um, about training Park outset, yeah. You weren't conned? Good. Good. We'd have listed, they would have got you. Go on. Yeah. Well, they are always Gold Coast based. Well, almost always Gold Coast based. They are always ringing you. Mm. So please contact me if they do. And we, can, and we can work it through. Okay, now, credit risk. This simply means that you invest in a dud thing, and this has been going on forever. This is 60 years ago, Cambridge Credit were offering 9%. Anybody remember Cambridge Credit? Yeah. Uh, they were offering 9, AGCs were offering 7. Guess which one went broke? There was State Mortgage offering 18 when the market was offering 14. What an investment. Bank, bank guaranteed for a month, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we had West Point, we had FinCorp, we had City Pacific, you know what I mean? Stay away from them, honestly. Just stay away from those things. You know, if, if, if you want, you know, stay with people you know. And if you do have a, if you want to be in the benches and stuff, go through an advisor. If you go through an advisor and it goes bad, you can sue the advisor. See, most of these people went on newspaper advertisements. Most advisors now are owned, are owned by the four big banks, right? At least if you get a dud deal from them, you can sue them. Okay, now, next one. We've got, uh, and shares, okay. <coughs> the whole thing about shares is that the papers love them. They, they give the best headlines, meltdown, plunge, slump, you know. So we've got meltdown, we've got world meltdown, slump, recession fear, nothing changes, crash, you know, record fall, end of the affair. The Finley View managed to actually call the bottom of the market. My Matt Ashworth has a, has a thing called the Fear and Greed Index. He actually emailed me saying, my Fear and Greed Index, people are now totally fearful this is the bottom of the market. And he was right. And then uh, we had then followed by the market, strong market rally, followed by them saying it was normal, when it was totally normal. All you're seeing is shares behaving normally. Now, is that what shares and property do? No. Property does that, doesn't it? What do you reckon? 
I think so. And shares do that, don't they? The average Aussie investor has got the memory of a moth, one second. This is buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, right? So let's go back. I've got to get you keen on shares because anyone can buy the index. Anyone can buy the index. It's so simple. Put a thousand dollars if you want to. If you haven't got to find a property and search it out and pay land tax and rates and maintenance, just buy the index. Uh, that's going back to 1880, the average return per decade, per annum per decade. Is that pretty good? Real good, I reckon. And that's the number of negative years. Worse has been four. Four negative years mean what? Six good ones, right? So if you've got shares, you can expect four negative years every ten just as night follows day and day follows night. And that's the best year in, in return so far. Can you explain the Great Depression then? Great Depression? Yeah, like 29. Like <coughs> well, I really don't know how good the records were. I mean, 1933 it came back, came back 26. <coughs> uh, you've got 19... Hang on, oh, I'll show you the worst. The, the, the worst year return was 1930 minus 30. See that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Minus 40. Oh, God, yeah. That happens. But I do think that 2008, well, that was, I mean, we've lived through, I would like to think, the worst thing in our lifetimes, I would think. When I was in London, when, when Lehman's collapsed, and round the Bank of England, they were burning effigies of Ferraris. You know, it was the death of capitalism. I've got the photos somewhere like I lost it. You know, but worst, but, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is that if, if you've got shares, there will be bad years, but the good years will be higher than the bad years are lower. That, that, that came out of, out of the curry. I mean, on, on a 10 year periods of the last, what, 70, uh, the last 60 years, shares have done four out of, out of uh, six. Property one and bonds one, and pretty good, I think. And that's the last 12 years. That's sort of fairly normal, I think. What I'm saying is get a handle on them, don't be frightened of them. And you can start small. Well, I was 2011 and red then. Oh, was that mean you say it was a negative year? It was a negative year, yes, it was. It was. Remember those, the graphs I showed you? I said last year was good. But also, that you get a bit caught because there's the year to June and the year to December. And the year to June can be different to the, and the long term is the same thing, but the, the numbers can be different to June to December. I was talking to a guy, $4 million industrial property vacant. Now, you know, with non-res, at least with a, with a house, you can get a tenant, can't you? But non res you can be vacant four or five years. I've got a place at Cotton Tree on the water, an office, office half a floor that's been vacant for three years. You can't rent them. If you can't rent them, you can't sell them. You'll never sell a non res without a tenant. But if you have got a tenant, tenant you don't want to sell it. All right? But you can invest in listed property trusts and have all the benefits of non res property with no land tax, no rates, and guaranteed income. So unless you're highly skilled in non-res property, I reckon you're better off in listed property trusts, unless you're really skilled. Okay, now the, the six mistake back last year's winner. I mean, this was a bunch of ASICs things. We just, just for fun, let's say at 1900 we've got a, the, the Aussie battler, who always backs last year's winner, and the psychic, who always knows what's happening going forward. So we give them both a dollar. And every December 31st, they cash in with no transaction cost or tax. And he puts his money in the best asset class past, and she puts hers in the best asset class forward. After 110 years, she's got nine quintillion, and he's got $700. <laughs> so if you really want to, want to make a mess, just keep back in last year's win, which most people do. Now, super. 
the main, the essential element is it's not a house, it's not a share, it's a vehicle. It's merely a vehicle that lets you hold assets in a low tax area. That makes sense. So if the if it's not performing, it's not the fault of the asset of super. It's the fault of the assets in there. If your super isn't performing as you wish, you need to take advice to see if the assets inside super match your goals on your risk profile. That makes sense? Yeah. Don't shoot the messenger. It's the only investment that you can contribute to with pre-tax dollars. Nothing else. Now over 60, we can now contribute 35,000 pre-tax dollars since last week. Okay? It's the only investment you can own if you're in business that the trustee in bankruptcy can't get if you go broke. It's the only investment at 60 years of age you can draw a tax-free income stream and have your money in a tax-free area. You know, it's pretty good. Now, so superannuation, when they say it's tax-free times, well, first of all, if you pay tax going, going in, you aren't paying tax in your in your pocket. I mean, if, if I get money in my pay packet, I, I lose tax, don't I? <coughs> but that tax in super, I can lose tax on a salary sacrifice contribution, but that is lesser tax than I'll take in my pay packet. And yes, there is tax inside super. It's 15% on earnings, which is less than my marginal tax rate. The capital gains tax is 10%. Once you reach 60, for most people, there is no tax on any part of it. Your money is in a tax-free zone, and you're drawing a tax-free income. Now, it can't get any better, can it? Seriously, say yes. <laughs> what else can I give you? Hold your money tax-free and draw it out tax-free. I can't give any more than that, can I? And with the franking credits, you get your franking credits back. That's a fabulous part about it. That's a fabulous part about it. Um, also, that I do admit there's a tax coming in that if you earn more than $100,000 a member, you pay a little bit of tax on the excess, but gee, it's tiny. I mean, to me, if I, can, if I and my wife can draw 100000 each from my super fund and just pay 15% tax on the excess of that, I reckon I'm doing very, 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 very well at that. Now, deductible caps, 25,000 deductible, up to 35,000 if you're 60 and over. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's real good. And non-deductible, 150. So in, June, in, in next week, I'll be putting in 220,000 for my wife and I, 35,000 each for us, and 150 for me, and she's already under the bring forward rule, so she, so she can't contribute until next year. I think it's great. Now, taxes, well, with we're gone on those. Now, self-managed fund. The, the big question is, should I start a self-managed fund? I'm on the ASIC local board. It's ASIC's biggest area of concern is self-managed funds because they're being used by property spruikers to sell overpriced property. That's the main reason they're being pushed or by accountants who are overcharging. <coughs> Now, I've, I've got a self-managed fund. It's fairly active. I'm paying six grand a year in fees to my administrator. I've got mates paying 15000 It's unbelievable, all right? So self-managed funds, this is straight from, straight from the ASIC website. If you want to start a self-managed fund, ask yourself why. And the main reason most people, there are two reasons most people start a self-managed fund. The first one is, I could have done better myself, right? The market falls, has a negative year. Oh, God, I can do better than myself. Well, yes, if you want to keep your money in cash, you probably can. So that's the wrong reason. Uh, will you benefit? You can lose insurance transferring. Will your self-managed fund outperform your current fund? Most people's self-managed funds haven't got a benchmark, haven't got a clue how their fund is doing. What if something goes wrong? See, Trio Capital, it lost millions of dollars for people in self-managed funds. If you invested to a retail fund, 
or a sun super, you got your money back under the indemnity scheme, but not the self-managed fund. You lose protection. And I guess do you know enough? So reasons to have your own fund. If you've got a, if you've got a great track record on direct shares, then it's hard to envisage why you wouldn't want to have your own fund. You know, or your own business premises. I agree, your own fund. If you want investments like artwork, which I think there is nothing worse, and you're prepared to buy artwork and lock it away so you can't even watch it, have your own fund. Option trading. Anyone doing any option trading? Anybody? I've been talked to a bit by the, by the broker. We're doing very well to recently. Then we'll start to look at some fairly hefty losses. I'll be extremely wary. And the reasons not to have your own fund is you reckon you can do better yourself. You want to control, all right? Your accountant or a property speaker talk, talk to you into it to give it a property which is ridiculous, or you, or you aren't detail minded. Because does anyone know what the penalty is for getting it wrong? Yeah, but people think they lose this tax free tax free status. It doesn't. Just to make it very simple, you've got a two million dollar super fund and a million dollars is taxable component and a million dollars is non taxable, and you get it wrong. The penalty is 46.5% of the taxable balance at the previous June 30. $465,000 penalty for getting it wrong. It's almost half the taxable assets of the fund. It's huge. So, you know, so uh, that to me is the reason. So, um, I think we can pause there now and have a little break. But um, I think most people don't want a self-managed fund. It tends to be blokes, not women, because you know, I've got to control it. And of course there's things like, and it can happen very, very easily. The old guy, 80, was sitting there and he took a hundred, he was online and got a hundred thousand dollars out of his self-managed fund into the joint account and pressed the wrong button and put it back in the fund. Hundred thousand dollars excess contribution, penalty forty-seven thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Most people don't need a self-managed fund. And if you're buying property, why would you want to do it, do it inside super? It's a basic tax principle. You take the tax deduction as high as you can, as soon as you can. So if you're a high income earner, you would negative gear at a property, wouldn't you? Why would you want to go and form a, form a bear trust, three months of paperwork, and you can't improve the property, and do it inside super? Why would you bother? And then if you want another one, you've got to do all over it and, and form another bear trust. It's too complicated. I like it fair simple. For most people, you don't want to self-manage money. Thanks very much, and we'll talk some more later. Thank you.